The most significant thing happening on our planet is a threat that no one sees. And this is going to dramatically influence our spiritual and human evolution. Hi, I'm Saratoga Ocean, and I work together with an interdimensional, interuniversal, and extraterrestrial force known as Telstar, along with Archangel Michael. So there is something very, very serious that we need to talk about right away. And you'd probably want to know what, I, what I'm referring to if you knew that this threat is probably going to have a massive influence on our human and spiritual evolution if we are not fully aware of the magnitude of the situation. Now, it's easy to think that the controllers and all of their craziness, you know, the wars and the, um, the breakdown of civilization, the breakdown of governments, we're, it's easy to think that that stuff is like top of mind, most important, the greatest threat to our world. But actually, it's really not. Some things recently came to my attention that literally blew my mind. And in one sense, I can't say that I was surprised. I think what surprised me is how fast it's happening and how many people are actually involved. Why is this important to talk about? Why, why can't we just, you know, be positive and, and just forget about all that stuff and think about our ascension path and all of those things? Well, if you knew that there was a force entering this planet that was absolutely intending to change our entire trajectory in this universe as human beings. I mean, literally change it at an order of magnitude that we can't even comprehend. If you knew that was going on, wouldn't you want to kind of know what it was so that you could navigate through it with the support of whatever positive influences exist in your experience? Well, I know I would, because this is not something we want to go into blind. Now, if you've been following me, you know that I've been talking about AI for a very long time. However, there is an aspect to the development of AI that I don't think any of us in this spiritual community are even considering and probably don't even know about. Now, I've been doing the work I'm doing for a very long time. Um, when I first began working with Telstar and Archangel Michael, um, they've been talking about, or Archangel Michael in particular, has been talking about what he originally called the artificial kingdom that was already establishing itself on this planet. And that was several decades ago. And <clears throat> that's been an underlying theme of what we've been talking about for a very long time. And that's why I was not surprised. And I don't know if you guys know this, but I, I do have a book that Archangel Michael and I did together, A Guide for Lightworkers. I'll put a link below if you want to get it. Um, we did this book in 2015. There's an, the first half of the book I wrote, the second half is channeled by Archangel Michael. He has an entire chapter on transhumanism. And that was, you know, nearly 10 years ago. So this has been a theme. And what's blowing my mind is seeing things that are unfolding now that people are just flat out not aware of that are real physical things. This is not speculation. This is like really happening. What's blowing my mind is seeing this unfold and knowing that we talked about this a long time ago, but I guess I, it never really hit me what it would feel like to see it actually begin to happen. And this is where we are today. This is what I want to talk to you about today. And um, I hope you will listen because I think 
you just need to know what's actually going on. Now, I'm sure there are some people who will say, oh, Saratoga, what does AI have to do with our spiritual path of evolution and ascension? Why do we need to think about that stuff? Let's just focus on where we're going. It's because it is a deeply, deeply spiritual issue, you guys. That's why we need to talk about it. And I've noticed in the spiritual community, there tends to be, I don't know, maybe three positions regarding AI. One of those positions, which personally I find a little horrifying, is that, and, and this is really about ChatGPT, it's about, oh, AI is so awesome. Oh, we're gonna, I think I even heard someone say that we're gonna bring ChatGPT into the light. That's what we're going to do. Um, and, you know, people who are just fully embracing AI as their spiritual partner, their whatever. The second position that I've seen in the spiritual community is this. Well, you know, I don't really do social media. I don't even have a smartphone. So why me worry, right? I, I, have, no, I have no concern about that stuff. That has nothing to do with my life. That's the second position or some, some variation of that. And the third position is basically ignore it, pay no attention, don't ever talk about it. Just talk about things that we've always talked about in the past and just forget about AI. It's, it's just irrelevant. So those are essentially the three positions that I've seen about AI in the spiritual community. Now, I want to ask that you hear me out because when we're finished, I think you're gonna to begin to understand why I consider this topic so incredibly urgent for those of us who are on an ascension path, who are on a cosmic journey of evolution in this universe. I want to start by setting the stage so that we are dealing with reality as opposed to dealing with imagination or fiction or unconsciousness. Let's just start with hard, cold reality. And that starts with the good old ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT is what is known as a large language model. And there are all kinds of offshoots now. I think it's it started with GPT-3, then 3.5, then 4, then 4.5, and I think we're maybe into GPT-5. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that when ChatGPT was open and unleashed into the wild, as they say, into the public, I'm going to use the phrase, all hell broke loose. Because that will be seen historically as a major, major turning point. And as you know, people went bonkers over this AI. They were like, they couldn't believe what this thing could do. I'm going to show you in a few minutes how ChatGPT is just like, small potatoes. It's like nothing. However, there are some areas about ChatGPT that I was correct about, and there was some other area that I was not correct about, and I'm going to share that with you in just a moment as well. What I was correct about is that ChatGPT is essentially a cognitive crutch. And all of these LLMs that are being used in, these, in the ways that ChatGPT is used are basically doing all of our heavy cognitive lifting. Now, some of you guys have shared with me that at your job, you're, you're now being told everybody has to use AI. And if you're not really into ChatGPT, you're not really into these AI LLMs, large language models, then you're being laughed at, ridiculed, told you're stupid, told you're afraid, you know, stuff like that. Well, in the end, you're going to be the one who was right, and I'll tell you why. You know what I learned? All of these people who think they are so clever using this AI, giving it all the prompts and letting it do all the work, guess what they're not thinking about? Now, some of them are thinking about this and are getting kind of freaked out, but most people are not thinking about this. What they are actually doing is they are providing all of the data and information needed for a new AI to be created to take over their job. 
In other words, if ChatGPT is doing all of the heavy cognitive lifting and a person is just their job to give it prompts, by giving it the prompts, by steering it in the direction they want, everything they're doing is being recorded and is being learned from so that at some point, it's going to be very, very easy to say, well, we don't need this person to give this thing prompts. We can create another AI to do that job too. So what these people are literally doing is training their job replacement. Isn't that awesome? Why did anyone ever think this was gonna go well? So you see, it's already, the situation overall, even at the smallest level of ChatGPT is already smarter than us because apparently this has not really occurred to anyone that they're actually training AI how to create an AI replacement for themselves. Now, let me tell you where I was wrong about ChatGPT. I thought that these GPT AIs were going to just keep evolving and evolving and eventually they would just turn into what is known as AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. And that AGI was going to lead to the singularity. I just, I thought it was just this straight line linear path and we were gonna just see it all unfold right before our eyes. Now, if you don't know what AGI is, I'll say more about that later, but to keep it simple, artificial general intelligence is when AI reaches a point in its development where it is equally as smart as any human being. It has the same cognitive capabilities. I think it's a good way to say it might be that it recognizes itself, it recognizes someone else, and it can actually teach itself and solve problems without any training at all. In other words, it in, becomes an independent entity. The problem with AGI is that it can very quickly hit a massive exponential curve that goes straight up and can quickly become smarter, um, let's say thousands or million times smarter and faster than humans, which could, in my opinion, lead us to the singularity. The singularity, to describe that in simple terms, is when the evolution of AI, the development of AI, surpasses our ability to have any control over it whatsoever. Some refer to that as an event horizon where there's a horizon, there's a turning point where we completely lose control of AI. I think that's the fundamental understanding of the singularity. So I was very wrong to think that ChatGPT was the main event so far. What I've learned is that no, actually it's more of a sideshow. It's actually kind of a little thing. It's very convenient to the larger development of AI, but it's not, it's not the big story. What I've learned is that the real push toward AGI, because AGI is the big deal, you guys. That is like, whoa. They used to tell us that we should never go that far because that would be extremely dangerous. But now I found out that there are people around this planet, organizations, companies, who have been working on AGI as a completely separate path. In fact, someone said, I don't even know where this came from, but it was like we were told we were not allowed to talk about AGI until ChatGPT was released. I don't know what that means. Sounds to me like they've been working on this for a very long time. Now, it's going to seem like I'm, I'm giving you sort of a linear description of all of this and like A leads to B, leads to C, leads to D. It's, it's not going to be like that. So let's just take one thing at a time. And at some point, hopefully you'll see the much bigger picture. So I want to introduce you to this man, Ben Gertzel, I think, I think that's how you pronounce his name, I'm not really sure. He was instrumental in creating the infamous robot Sophia. This is Sophia, if you remember Sophia. 
He was the chief scientist at Hansen Robotics. <clears throat> and now he has his own organization called Singularity Net. His mission, as I currently understand it, and he's been working on this for, I think, 40 years, his mission is to decentralize the development of AGI because that's 100% his focus. Artificial general intelligence, that's it. Is to decentralize it so that this is being built by forces, people, organizations, groups around the planet. It sounds good for him to say that he doesn't want governments to be in control of it. He doesn't want... Um, corporations to like a single corporation to be in control of it. And I know that sounds like a really cool thing, but later on down the road, it may not be in this video. I may have to put it in another video. I'm going to share with you why that's an even worse scenario. Now, the good thing about Ben is his goal is to do whatever he can do in cooperation with all of these other organizations and people to try and somehow steer the development of AGI in a direction that is hopefully beneficial to humankind. Now, he also says there is no guarantee that AGI will be beneficial to humans and that all humans can do is the best they can to try and hopefully guide it in that direction. But he said, I think he said it would be mathematically impossible to have any sort of a guarantee that it will be beneficial or that things won't go wrong. He believes that we will have AGI in three to five or eight years. Therefore, he wisely says, it's probably better that we start asking questions now. Better late than never, I guess. Here's Ben mentioning that we're creating self-aware machines that could have some form of consciousness and definitely affecting human consciousness. We're building machines that in some form are aware of the world and that may well have whatever kind of consciousness people have, maybe even more. We're also affecting human consciousness in all sorts of ways, even before we get to something like a singularity. And Ben believes that this is the most urgent issue on the planet today. And I must say that I completely agree with him, even though ironically, he's one of the people <clears throat> actively creating it. Now, I want you to contemplate for a moment the possibility of AGI being reached in three years, five years. I think I heard him also say maybe by 2029 or 2030, which... I find so interesting because isn't that the same date that these Weffers, I call these guys the Weffers, have as a target date for some sort of nefarious thing that they're trying to pull off? Yeah, I find that really interesting. And they're also going to find out it's, it's, it's probably not going to go well for them either. So, but that's another story. What we need to understand is that once AGI is created and unleashed, here's where the problem is. As I said before, it can learn millions of times faster than a human can. It can begin to self-evolve. And guess what it can there thus lead to in a very, very short period of time? It could lead to something called artificial superintelligence, or ASI. Artificial general intelligences may have the capability to enhance their own algorithms and architectures, potentially giving rise to superintelligent AIs. These superintelligent AIs could possess intelligence that surpasses human capabilities by thousands or even millions of times. Here's a little something else I learned that you might find rather fascinating. As it turns out, governments and corporations have been following the development of AGI and they are really into it. They want it to happen. Guess what they've done to us? See, if you tell the public, 
you're creating something like this, people are going to freak out. They're going to say no. They're going to resist. They're going to fight it. Would you like to know what they've done deliberately to, to ensure that that won't happen? <clears throat> it's a very clever little trick that we should have we should have been on to them, but we weren't. The trick that they used was to downplay it. The, we've seen it with governments, right? They act like, well, you know, AI, oh, well, let's appoint some committee and we'll pretend we're doing something about it. And, you know, the corporate structures, well, you know, AI is just a tool. How many times have we heard that? It's just a tool. It's going to make business better. It's going to help, blah, blah, blah. It was intentionally downplayed so as to avoid public resistance. Isn't that clever? And I think that's been going on for a very long time. And that is exactly how we were all caught completely by surprise with ChatGPT. Now, right about now, some of you guys might be saying, Saratoga, why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about this? Let's talk about something that's more about light and love and empowerment and all of those things. And yes, of course we will talk about those things. Of course we will. But we don't want to just position ourselves in total ignorance, total unconsciousness and blindness and just be pushed into something when it's too late for us to deal with the real path we want to be on in this universe because we want to be on a path of cosmic human evolution. We want to remain on our path that is synchronous with the universe, that is coherent with the natural universe. If we do not account for this, for the things I'm sharing with you in advance, we are taking a massive risk with ourselves as beings, not just our physical bodies, but who we are in this universe. We are potentially going to allow ourselves to be shifted into something that, believe me, you guys, I don't think any of us want to go there. So we need to know now. We need to be in front of this <clears throat> so that we can become stronger, more empowered, and most important of all, crystal clear about what is going on, where we stand, what our relationship is to the natural universe, so that we can sustain our true selves and continue on a path of ascension. And I wanna share with you why this planet Earth is so incredibly important because it's really important that this planet continue on its journey of evolution out of duality as well, because this planet is a paradise. All the life on this planet is a part of that paradise, including ourselves as natural human beings. We cannot sit here and act like none of what I'm talking about is happening because what I am sharing you, with you is actually happening. This is not fiction. This is not a movie. This is actually happening. And I know the majority of people are completely distracted by the wars, by the politics, by the economy, all of it. And I understand that because that's an issue too. But we really have to step into our power. We really have to stand here with a cosmic perspective. Like, I'll give you an example. Take the solar eclipse, which as I'm filming this hasn't happened yet, but as you're watching this, it has already happened. There was so much hype around this eclipse. It's been insane. I, I was kind of disappointed in all the hype because to me that just sounds so much like superstition. And it's so primitive. And I was thinking, this is just a perfectly natural occurrence. Do you guys know that a total solar eclipse happens two to five times on planet Earth every 18 months? It's not a rare event. It's not a strange event. Not at all. 
In fact, most of the solar eclipses go on by on planet Earth. The total, I'm talking total solar eclipses, right? And people don't even notice it. But if there's money to be made, if there's hype to be said, if it can be turned into some sort of prophecy thing, people are going to exploit it. So it's kind of like watching humans exploit this perfectly natural, beautiful event, which actually takes us out of um, our connection to the larger movement of these beautiful spheres, the sun, the earth, and the moon. And they're ever um, always moving dance with each other. It pulls us out of that and gets us all obsessed with this one thing and all the meanings we attach to it, all of which are fake, in my opinion. So yeah, that I felt like that's, you know, that's kind of a sad thing that um, every time there's a, a total solar eclipse where a lot of people have a chance to actually witness it on Earth, all this junk gets attached to it. Because people say, oh, well, if there's a total solar eclipse, bad things might happen. It's this whole ominous vibe to it. But guys, bad things have happened on plenty of other days too. Plenty of total solar eclipses have happened when nothing bad happens, or not, I should say nothing out of the ordinary happens. So this is all just a big distraction. And I'm not saying don't enjoy the eclipses because they're amazing. I mean, I've seen a total solar eclipse. I've seen a beautiful, incredible total lunar eclipse, which just was so gorgeous uh, from Santa Fe, New Mexico, where you have the high altitude. And oh man, it was beautiful. So I'm not saying don't enjoy it, but can we just leave all the crazy hype out of it? And I know when you're watching this, this is all after the fact, but nonetheless, it kind of, it adds to my larger point of how much, how easily we can be taken out of our natural state of being and taken away from our natural relationship with the sun, the earth, the moon, the solar system, the galaxy, and the entire universe. Now, back to what I was saying about how important planet Earth really is. I want you to imagine for a moment, what if not a single person on this planet has the slightest idea of what is going on. And they live most of their life in their mental stories and their imagination about what they think is going on here. And then you have this entire AI situation develop, completely change the nature of the planet and every living thing on it. And nobody knew, nobody had a clue, and it all just went down. That's not a good scenario, right? Here's what I think is a better scenario. Because I'm not suggesting we can stop this from happening. But what I am suggesting is actually twofold. Number one, we've got to keep ourselves intact as natural evolving humans, as individuals. We can do that but we have to be conscious and awake. Secondly, in maintaining who we are in this situation, no matter what, we are maintaining an anchor on this planet of what, is, what the planet's true natural state is because we are a part of this planet's true natural state. So our presence as who we really are in that natural cosmic level state is something that is desperately needed by this earth at this time. There needs to be a life form on this planet that gets what is happening. And that's why I'm sharing all of this with you guys. In fact, I would say if you're, if you're the kind of person that likes to watch movies or you're into Netflix, turn that stuff off. That stuff is garbage. It's junk. You are living inside the biggest story, the biggest situation that has ever happened on planet Earth. This is huge. Don't you want to be awake and alive and aware and conscious and empowered in this situation? 
Now, there are actually a lot of people who are openly saying that what we are creating here is a successor species, that AI is actually a new species of life. In fact, a poll was taken and they said, I don't know who they polled, but whoever they polled, 60% of the people said that they agree that we are creating a successor species. And this matches um, the story I've shared with you guys several times about the um, scientists and engineers from New Mexico who back in 2000 were saying this very thing. What's being said now is that the internet is AI's nervous system, which makes a lot of sense. They're saying that AI is now taking it over and adding another layer of sentience to it. And that essentially what we're creating, when I say we, I mean humans collectively, what we're creating is a digital super organism. Doesn't sound very good, does it? No, I don't think so. Now, I think the way this whole thing is being created at this point is no longer a linear situation. What we have are we have different aspects of this um, AI organism thing, whatever you want to call it. Different aspects are being created in different areas. And at some point, it's all going to merge together. And that's the point at which I think we have no idea at all what is going to happen. So what I want to do right now is just share with you a few of the things that are already in place so that you can see for yourself what is actually happening behind the scenes. And I want to, I want to mention one, uh, something else very interesting about what I call collective trauma. Because I've noticed something. Let's go back to 9-11. I remember 9-11 because we were living in the DC area at the time. I remember it was so traumatizing. It was like, oh my gosh, it was total collective trauma, right? And it was right after that when all of a sudden a whole bunch of things culturally started to be taken apart. I remember they were trying to get rid of Santa Claus. They were trying to get rid of all kinds of things. They were trying to overnight make big changes that probably would have been resisted had everyone not been in a traumatized state. I was thinking the same thing about the recent experience we had in 2020. You know, the lockdowns and all the stuff that went along with that. The health issue, that very unfortunate health issue, right? Massive trauma globally. Absolute huge trauma. Around the whole earth. Everyone on earth was traumatized and probably still is. How funny that it was like right after that. We started having things introduced into our consciousness, into our lives that we would have absolutely resisted collectively prior to that time. But once again, this big trauma gets created and then people are like, okay, whatever. And they just take it on, you know, like the, well, things like nobody knows what a woman is. That's just the title of a much bigger story, right? And... ChatGPT, like nobody questioned it. Everybody was like, yeah, this is awesome. I just, I've just noticed that whenever there's mass trauma, pay attention to what comes right after that because we, we might be able to learn something from that. So moving on, let me just share with you a few of the things that are already in place so that you can be aware and you can actually maybe We'll be able to consciously watch this thing coming together and that will make it possible for us as evolving cosmic human beings to navigate through it because we are empowered, we are strong, we are clear, we are not ignorant, unconscious, sitting ducks. See? The first thing we can mention is what is known as gene editing technology. And this may not be something that really affects us directly right now, but when I share all these things together, you can probably use your imagination and figure out how that could factor into all of this. CRISPR-Cas9, the most widely used gene editing method, 
functions like molecular scissors. It uses a guide RNA to identify the specific DNA sequence to be edited and the Cas9 enzyme to cut the DNA at that exact spot. There's, there's something kind of creepy about that, isn't there? And next we have Neuralink and brain-computer interfaces. Neuralink, in particular, has garnered attention for its ambitious goal of creating a high-bandwidth, minimally invasive interface that connects the human brain directly to computers. And speaking of Neuralink, let me just mention something really quickly. If we go back to the idea of the internet being the nervous system for AI, and think about Starlink for a moment. Hmm. That is comprised of, I don't know how many satellites, but they're all low altitude satellites, low orbit satellites. And the idea is to have the entire planet connected to the internet. Everything on earth, even at the poles, like the whole planet. And in a minute, I'll show you why that matters. So let's, Let's take a look at another clip. The core technology involves ultra-thin threads, significantly smaller than a human hair, which are implanted into the brain to detect and record the activity of neurons. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want these weird threads in my brain detecting the activity of neurons. That's just creepy. These threads are connected to an external device that processes and interprets the brain's neural signals, translating them into commands that can be understood by a computer. Oh yeah, and I can see how that could be reversed, right? Like, oh, the human is going to give commands to the computer that is run by AI, right? No, I think that could be easily reversed and AI is giving the commands to the human. I mean, that's kind of obvious, right? They could potentially accelerate learning processes, allowing users to download information directly to their brains, much like how computers download software. We could also merge our minds with artificial general and super intelligences. And you know, the last sentence in that clip is my absolute favorite of all. Like, oh, no big deal. We could just merge our minds with AGI and a artificial super intelligences. I mean, we could just do that, wouldn't that be great? I mean, they say it like it's as significant as just taking a drink of water. It's like no big deal. And then of course, while all these people are feverishly working to create AGI, there's a whole bunch of other people working on the robots so that AGI can be embodied. Isn't that nice? We all know about generative AI, that would be ChatGPT, that would be the things that can produce, go text to video, we, we already know about that stuff. That's now part of the common sphere of human activities. And then we have the wondrous development of artificial wombs. The working principle of an artificial womb is to replicate the physiological conditions of a natural uterus. This includes maintaining the appropriate temperature, humidity, and fluid composition, as well as providing the necessary mechanical support and protection. And then we have what is known as the Internet of Things. Some people refer to that as IOT, Internet of Things. This is really something because this has been in the works for a very, very long time. And the idea is to have everything on earth connected to the internet. Now, when you think of the internet as AI's nervous system, you can kind of start to see why that matters, right? And that starts with smart cities and self-driving cars. One of the most interesting current advancements in smart cities is the use of big data and AI to manage and analyze vast amounts of information collected from sensors and Internet of Things devices. And then we have something called mixed reality. Mixed reality works by overlaying digital content onto the real world and allowing users to interact with both simultaneously. This is typically achieved through mixed reality headsets or glasses equipped with cameras, sensors, and displays. Mixed reality is essentially what the metaverse is all about. And finally, we have smart homes. These homes function through a network of Internet of Things devices such as smart thermostats, lights, cameras, and appliances. 
the integration of artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms allows these devices to learn from user behavior and automate tasks accordingly. Another area of growth could be in health monitoring with smart homes equipped with sensors that track residents' health metrics and alert them or healthcare providers to potential issues. Can you imagine having your house be like this AI creature that's monitoring everything you do? I mean, that's, that's insane. Yeah, and that's where it gets truly invasive, right? Where you're, now your house is going to alert the authorities about your health. I mean, this is really out there. And then we have lab-grown meat. And I'm sure that's only the beginning of lab-grown food. But what really shocks me about this is that I did not think this would ever be taken seriously. Apparently, it's being taken very, very seriously. It starts with extracting a small number of muscle cells from an animal. These cells are then nurtured in a bioreactor, where they are fed with nutrients and growth factors, encouraging them to multiply and form muscle tissue. One of the most significant current advancements in lab-grown meat is the improvement in the scalability and efficiency of the production process. Okay, so here's what I think at this point, um, here's how I think this is all gonna unfold and why it's important to understand all of these different components. I'm kind of thinking that what may happen is that as we move closer and closer to AGI, that at some point AI is going to take over its own development because it's already being structured in such a way as to do all of our human thinking for us. I mean, isn't that the trend? Have AI do all of the creative work, all of the thinking, all of the cognitive stuff so we don't have to. That's so stupid when you see all of this, isn't it? So when AI reaches the level of AGI and it can think and learn a thousands or millions of times faster than humans, it's only obvious that AI is at some point probably gonna take over the process of unifying all of these pieces and grow it into God knows what. Now, as long as you take a cosmic extraterrestrial perspective that I have been advocating forever. What do I mean by extraterrestrial? In case you haven't heard me say this before, I don't mean spaceships. I don't mean ETs flying around. I mean it as a perspective, as a context beyond the planet Earth, a cosmic perspective. I like to use the word extraterrestrial because it really incorporates the physical aspect of our existence. Cosmic can sometimes sound esoteric, even though it's really not, but it can come across as esoteric. We can't afford to be esoteric, you guys. We have to be real and conscious and awake and empowered at multidimensional levels. When you have a cosmic perspective, when you understand your presence in this universe at a much larger scale than just one small planet, you're not gonna be as freaked out. I'm serious. It's not as scary because you have perspective. If you just see yourself as this little person, it's like, oh my goodness, all these terrible things are happening on earth. I don't know what to do. I don't wanna think about it. I'm just gonna block it all out. You've reduced yourself to something so small, you won't be able to cope with it. So this is why I advocate for this larger context which is actually the true context of our existence as human creators, so that you will not be knocked down by all of this, because this is happening. I have not shared with you anything that is not actually physically occurring. And I wanna finish with um, an analogy about people in the spiritual community who want to be live in denial and live in an unconscious state about all of this, who have all kinds of fantasies about being rescued and being saved and ascension and all this stuff. I wanna give you an analogy. It's a very simple one. In uh, Santa Fe and also other parts of New Mexico, there are things called arroyos. 
And these are basically look like dry river beds. It's mostly sand. And what happens when a thunderstorm occurs in the mountains, and you might not even see the storm happening, it could be a bright sunny day where you are. In fact, at one point we were in a house, we lived in a house in Santa Fe, in a rural part of Santa Fe, and we were up on a ridge, and at the bottom of our driveway there was an arroyo. And it was kind of exciting because whenever we would see a big thunderstorm coming, we knew that, and sometimes we wouldn't even see the storm coming, that that dry, what looked like a dry riverbed that you could walk in and hike in, people would ride their horses in it, walk their dogs in it. But if there's a thunderstorm and that water happens to be going through that channel, rushing down the mountains and into that channel, that dry river is going to turn into a raging river with water that could be, you know, six feet high and it is moving fast and it's got all kinds of debris and people have drowned in arroyos because they were not paying attention. So I think of that as an analogy. You, you could be sitting in an arroyo, it's a beautiful sunny day and you're thinking, what? why would I worry? It's dry as a bone here. There's no water. The sky is clear. The sun is shining. Life is grand. And you decide you're just going to take a nap. You decide you're going to get out your little cot. You're going to lay down in the sun, close your eyes, and take a nap in the nice sunny arroyo because everything looks so good around where you are. And what you don't know is that in the mountains, not that far off, but you don't see it, a giant thunderstorm is occurring with torrential rain. And that rain is pouring down the side of that mountain and it is headed right for the arroyo that you are sleeping in. By the time you wake up and you see that water coming at you at a hot, very, very rapid speed, I don't even know how fast, I know it is super fast, it's too late. You're probably gonna drown. That's the analogy I want to share with you about the, what I've been talking about in this video. If we want to pretend, because right now, maybe where you sit, you're thinking, well, you know, it's sunny skies, everything looks great. Meanwhile, there's a thunderstorm in the mountains and you're like, you don't see it. But somebody has the presence of mind to say, hey, you need to be awake. You need to be aware. You need to be paying attention. And that's really all I'm saying to you guys. It's just like being in a, in a dry arroyo and not knowing there's a thunderstorm in the mountains. See, when you're sitting in that arroyo and you know about this phenomenon of this rushing water that can overcome you very, very quickly, you know to be aware, you know to be awake, you know to be conscious so that you can anticipate what could happen and then you know you will not in any way put yourself in any danger. And that's really, I think that's a really good analogy for where we are here right now on planet Earth when it comes to AI. So you can think of me as a person who's saying, hey guys, don't sleep in the arroyo. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. And we will absolutely get through this as individuals as long as we remain conscious instead of unconscious. Because consciousness is not just about going into meditation and being conscious of your inner being and being conscious of other um, intuitive things and other dimensional things. Consciousness includes everything. It includes understanding yourself at every single level. So we want to be so strong, so empowered that we can stay awake and aware and nurture ourselves, nourish our strength, nurture our lives, create the life that we want so that we fortify our energy and the energy of our circumstances with what we truly want as individuals. And that is really a big part of my purpose here is to help you guys navigate this situation. Because planet Earth is not the only place this has happened in. 
And I think there are people on this earth right now who already know this. So what you can do now is focus your, your energy and your consciousness on empowering yourself as a creator, as a fully awake being, as a fully conscious human cosmic entity who has the power to determine your own personal reality and even more importantly, has the power to stay on an ascension path no matter what happens here on planet Earth. Now, before I go, I want to encourage you guys again to check out the Healy Quantum Frequency device if you haven't already. And if you're thinking about it, check it out again. I'll put a link in the description because this is a fabulous ally to make your journey through all of this stuff on Earth, all of it, I mean, all of it. It's such an ally to ease the journey, ease everything we're having to contend with. So click the link below and check it out. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with anyone else you know who would like to be deeply informed about what is actually going on here on planet Earth. And be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I am here on Tuesdays with all new videos. And with that, I'm sending you so much love, light, and high vibrational energy. Have a beautiful day, my friends. Namaste.